Welcome to the Short Box. Hi, I'm Jerry Galante. And I'm Kevin. And I'm not going to sing still. I'm Donald. Sorry, I just, I was moved by Kevin's last performance. If you listen to our Image uh, comics, uh, The Rise of Image, uh, part one. This is part two. Uh, I guess we could say the resurgence, but um, yeah. yeah, let's say the resurgence. Don't call it a comeback. Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years, and they were here for years, but a lot of people didn't know that. And we're going to talk about how they came back in a huge, big, big way. Kevin, lay us some truth. Prophesies. All right, brother. I'm time to pontificate. Pontificate. Tommy, to bring it because. Bring it. This is what saved the company. This is what is what makes this company so amazing, so worthy, and so diverse that it just makes your head spin. And what what would that with pleasure? What would that be? The year two thousand three. <laughs> just the year itself, two thousand three. That's two thousand three. A iconic and historic title debuted. It's a title that was originally called The World of Zombies, but now known to the world today, known as The Walking Dead. What? More importantly than The Walking Dead, creator extraordinaire Robert Kirkman. From Kentucky. From Kentucky? Uh, yes, sir. A good old uh, Kentucky boy. A, a man who's about our age, from Kentucky, who, who made good. Who's basically, as uh, McFarlane and many of the other original creators of, of Image called him, a child of Image. Someone who, like us, was a young boy picking up all these comics who was inspired to create his own. And indeed he did. And I was there at the Image Boom, as we all were. I was reading all the comics. And then it, I just, because of the, the late uh, uh, releases, the delayed uh, release dates for comics, I, I kind of lost interest because that was the first time i was dealing with that you know marvel and dc had this strict well-oiled machine books came out every 30 days you know or by by monthly or monthly and image kind of was dropping the ball on that and then every now and then i would see a new book that was getting some hype and i'd get into it like i said the darkness or uh, deviate or some of the other books so i would always go oh yeah image is there it's there but as far as i know it was it was just a company just holding on and then Mr. Kirkman came. Yes. And he came on strong. I would also give credit to um, to Valentino. Oh, yes. I'm glad you bring that up. Jim Valentino, along with Larry, Larry Martyr, who was the executive director, when the um, crash concluded and things had to, the pieces had to be picked up mm -hmm. from the rubble, they decided we need to have some quality control up in here. Mm -hmm. We need to strain things out or else we're going to end up like Malibu, <laughs> or even a company that was similar to them, which I think they might have brought a little bit from Eclipse. Yeah. Right. You know, if they want to live into the go on and last for the long haul and go 20, 25, 50 years into the future, they had to get their house in order. So they had to have some quality control because that was a big problem in the early years. And not only get their house in order, stick to their roots. Stick to creator their roots. owned, creator. Original, create it original, original art, content yeah original yeah. content we got a little everybody got a little tired of the same characters in books right superheroes right. built a certain way looked a certain way or, or right. what donald was talking about in the last podcast the the just rehashing or the straight up ripping off of of uh characters of like power sets looks uh everything mm -hmm. and here you have this guy this robert kirkman come in and because he was such a fan, because he had such a love and obviously a great talent, he started writing the shit out of these books. And 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 uh, for me, what got me back into it was I was watching a documentary called The Comedians of Comedy. Great documentary. It's uh, one of my favorite, uh, some of my favorite stand-ups, Pat Oswalt, Zach Galifianakis. This is kind of in their earlier careers. Oh yeah, was uh was Brian Posehn? Brian Posehn. Yeah. And uh oh my god, what's her name? Um she's got the funny voice. I'll get it. But uh just a it was a really they, he pretty much Pat Oswalt gets this idea to take all these comedians on tour and they go across uh you know, all these alt comics as people call them and stuff like that. But during they and they shot a documentary of them on the tour. And during and Pat Oswalt is everybody knows if they know Pat Oswalt and Brian Posehn are huge comic fans and even 
have done some writing for comics. Mm -hmm. uh, but Pat Oswalt kept talking about uh, this book, Invincible. And he kept talking to Brian Posehn, you know, because he said, you know, hey, when we stop at uh, these comic shops, uh, we got to, you got to check out this Invincible book. And now I'm a huge fan of Pat Oswalt, period. So I was just like, okay, if Patton's, you know, vouching for this, I got to check this book out. Right. So I started buying some of the trades and Invincible is awesome. It's it's literally like kind of what Savage Dragon was when it came out. It's a superhero <laughs> book yeah. with grit and and violence, but more so than Savage Dragon, no offense to Eric Larson or anybody, a really strong story. Well written. Yeah. Kirkman knows story. Yeah. It's funny. And that's um, where it all begins. His uh Invincible's first appearance was a noble causes issue. And that was another ten cent purchase. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that yeah. was like it was almost like like Hellboy is like that too. It's like Hellboy's first appearance was like in a, uh, a Dark Horse Presents or something. It was like uh, that. in a Burn book, I thought. His first comic appear, like his first full like comic, was a Next yeah. Men book. Yeah, that's Next it. Men. Yeah, yeah. It's Next but Men. then, uh, like his first first appearance, like Invincible, was like a cameo in a kind of like uh, to market it. You oh, know. maybe it was uh, was it the uh, San Diego Comic Con? Yeah, it was like know? a San Diego Comic Con gotcha. Dark Horse Presents or yeah, something yeah. like that. Maria Banford, that was the comedian I was thinking of. I don't want to, you know, act like I only remember the guys. You know, okay, I'm not, a, I'm not a sexist asshole. She was the comedian. She's awesome. Uh, but yeah, Invincible, and then obviously, some people might have heard of it. There's a kind of TV show. The uh, it's, is it you pronounce the L? It's Walking Dead, or is it Walking? I walking. Believe. Oh, like they're walking. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, obviously that book uh, it's the game changer. changed the fucking game. Yeah, yeah, that was a big one. Definitely a big one. Um, as as far as like game changers are concerned, there's a couple books that that I would like to bring up really quick just to go sure. over it. Um, to, to piggyback on the Walking Dead, that was of course created by Robert Kirkman and artist uh, Tony Moore. Mm -hmm. um, it focused on Rick Grimes, a deputy who was shot in the line of duty, and he woke uh, from a coma. And basically awoke into a zombie apocalypse that uh, placed Georgia under quarantine. Right. So he finds his wife and son, eventually uh, meets other survivors, gradually taking on the role of leader amongst a group uh, and later a community as they try to survive amongst this apocalypse or this right. apocalyptic situation involving zombies. That's a big thing with The Walking Dead. So other creators started looking at this formula and these ideas. Oh, I just wanted to say that what's interesting about this Walking Dead, you know, usually when you watch a zombie movie, it's more or less about the zombies. You don't care about the people. Right. They're just food. They're just yeah. food. Or how are they yeah. going to survive? This, yeah. this is actually... This is the opposite. Right. The this zombies, is a drama. The zombies are just the background. That's what a lot of people that watch the, the show, they were like, there's not enough zombie eating. You know, right. they didn't get the that it was a drama right. around a zombie apocalypse, not right. a zombie apocalypse with a little bit of drama. And That's I, the brilliance. And I, I've watched, I've watched the first season, I've watched some of the second season. It's a very well done show. Uh, not I, second season. I just, I, oh, I, <laughs> I didn't watch the full second. That's what I'm saying. I started the second season. I, I just can't get into it, and I, and I'm, I'm hurt because, or I'm, I'm affected. Not, I'm not literally like hurt, like my feelings. I'm hurt by it because I, re I've come from the books. And it's not that you have to stick to the books or whatever like that. I'm I'm fine if you if you did, you know if you take a little detour from that and go your own route. I'm totally fine with that. It's just when I get like I I can only read it in trades because I can't. There's no way I could wait month to month for that book because when I get a trade, I literally it's one of the few things few trades ever or books that I can read in one shot. I'll read it all day. I'll finish it, and I'll just be like, "My God, that story is insane." It it is a marathon style book. Now yeah. I'm I'm a little different. Um, I I did that originally because I had I had a I still do have a lot of the earlier books. I think issue like seven or eight on. I have all that run. I'm missing oh, like, and like one actual six. issues and shit. Yeah, oh, wow. individual issues. They're quite literally, you're missing the Terry Moore stuff. Right. So like, I have a few. I think of that, but what what I realized was I put them places I couldn't remember. <laughs> so they're in short boxes somewhere, and I have a lot of short boxes. So I was like, "Well, shit, I want to read this story." So then I went back and I bought the trades for like the first thirty or forty issues. It's a great read on the plane, let me tell you. Yes, yeah. it is. And then I started individually, then reading each and every issue after that because I was still buying the individual issues. 
Right. But I was I was I doubling down. I can't imagine. I I just still I still can't imagine that just holding your breath for that. I mean, I guess I hold my breath for like a ten issue run, but it's still I'm like, okay, at least I know I'll get a chunk. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you something. What Walking Dead teaches modern comic book writers, something that DC and Marvel need to learn. When you kill someone off, they, they didn't stay dead. And I mean, when, when, when death happens in the Walking Dead storyline, it's permanent, it's powerful, it affects you. Well, so, you, so you know that Lori Grimes ain't coming back. Tyrese ain't coming back. Yeah, they're not super. Glenn yeah. is sir as hell ain't coming back. Well, more than that, also, like, you will because the writing's so good, but do not get attached to, to any character, any character nope. in that book, man. Like, nope. that's the thing. Like, he's got balls he's got kirkman's got balls you'll, you'll take someone away that you get attached to just like that yeah mm-hmm. yeah and he he can write villains i mean the the governor negan he gets you to like hate these villains i mean so your blood is boiling and you're like and what's interesting these villains are very realistic you've had people throughout human history who act like this yeah so it's nothing out, out, out of the ordinary like oh right. no one acts like that oh no right the atrocities that some of these guys commit it's real yeah and, and the way that Ter- Terry Moore and then later Charlie Adler would draw the the that's another thing the artwork is so real so and visceral it's powerful so when someone dies they're being eaten alive they're being shot up or cut up you feel it and, and it's I, a black and white book and it's a black yeah. and white book so that was the brilliant another brilliant tactic that they used to make it black and white and, and cheaper color, too and cheaper mm-hmm. too well and actually the first season uh when Darabont did the first season um, they went back and they turned, they converted it into a black and white. So it was, it was six episodes, and then you could watch those first six episodes. And I think it was, it was the first six, or it was just the first episode. I can't remember if they did all six, to be honest now. But I know the first episode for sure was in all black and white. Really? And it was badass. I wish they kind of, honestly, I'd probably be, I, it sounds weird, but I'd probably be more into the series if they did the whole thing in black and white. Yeah. Just give it that kind of mon- monotone, just like kind of gray it would, look. It would pop out from. Yeah. It'd be completely different from anything that you see now. Yeah, yeah, which is true. It's still very good. I still highly recommend it. You know um, what? Sorry, real quick. Another sure. Just, just such a great goddamn fucking series. The the only other things I do outside of that is uh, Telltale Games mm. through uh, I think through your Xbox or PS4 or PS4 yeah, or any yeah any of those. Uh, they have almost like chapters yes. in these. Uh, uh, wh- wh- and the reason I liked it is because it was straight from the comics. Yes. Uh, you you know you're these characters in the comic world, and you're going through the world of The Walking Dead, and it's like I just remember there was a scene where it was like somebody dies, and you had to bury them, and I was like, okay, and it was like, all right, scoop the dirt. And I'm like, all right, I scoop the dirt, and it was like, do it again. And I was like. This is very realistic. I'm like burying somebody I just killed right now. Like it was just, it was like, you're really making me like, it's like interactive. yeah, very interactive. <laughs> you start crying. Yeah, I, was oh. like, I don't want it to. No, they're, at the, I mean, I won't, you know, I won't spoil it even though it's been long, you know, a while, but the first episode is like, it does have an ending where you're like, I don't want to do this. Like, this is mm-hmm. sad. I don't want this to end, you know? Yeah. You have to make some really difficult choices. Yeah. But just, just kudos once again to the world he's created with that. That you can even have these video games that are so in depth and stuff. It's just amazing. And you know, and after two thousand three, and I would say particularly two thousand nine, was when things really took off, or the resurrection really kicked in. First of all, you had uh, Chew, right? That was uh, it was written by John Lehman and uh, art by uh, Rob Gilroy. Gilroy, yeah. Um, it was about a U.S. Food and Drug Administration agent who solves crimes by receiving psychic impressions from food. And originally, that's what he would do. But, like, he went to some illegal gambling or chicken place or something. (laughs) Chicken's illegal, by the way. Like, eating chicken. Oh, really? Yeah, so they went to this illegal (laughs) chicken house. And he was eating, like, some of the soup or something. And somebody had just been killed. And, like part of their body somehow got in the soup (laughs) and when he took a bite of the soup he instantly got like flashes and images of how they died and who murdered them and everything that took place in that Uh. time so it was like being a detective and instead of using investigative skill to solve crime you just eat part of the dead body and you can figure it out so he's always got to eat a part of the dead body Pretty much, yeah. I mean, in order to to know what's going on, what happened to that body, he has to eat that part of the body, which is it's completely fascinating, an original spin on something. Yes, and this is where image has taken such a great turn because 
Do you think Marvel or DC would ever let that through? Would have green let that? No. And crazy. that's another, uh, I think, another tribute to uh, Valentina. And also Eric Stevenson, the current publisher. Yes, for, for going out on a limb and giving these types of books the um, opportunity. the opportunity that that they needed in right. order to get seen and read. But they don't care how weird the story is. If you just have a good story, that's all that matters. Right. And I know there's another one that's really near and dear to your heart that you really enjoyed that when it was out. It didn't last very long. It last long. But... Yes, that would be Jay Farber's Near Death. You know, I picked it up just by chance. It's about 2011. You know, it looked cool. I see a guy with, you know, like, like an old, it's like some kind of detective or something. It's like a, a Punisher, like an yeah, old, Punisher, old, old school old Punisher. Old-ass Punisher. Kind of like, uh, what's, what's the thing, Dirty Harry or something like that. You know, it's about right. to take care of some business. Mm -hmm. But basically, it's about a guy, a hitman named Markham, who is nearly, who's killed or briefly dies on the operating table, but then he has a vision of hell where he's haunted by all the ghosts of people he's taken out. So one tells him that he still has time to make up for his sins. So when he uh, recovers from his gunshot wound, he decides to do something different. He stops killing people. Instead, he'll just kind of get you to an inch of your life, but he won't kill you. And what he does is he decides to actually start going and saving people. Instead of killing Instead them, Instead of yeah. killing them. Because, like, wasn't he, like, seeing the dead bodies of all the people that he killed? Murdered, they were yeah. haunting him, like, in his dreams and shit. And he was like, I can't, I'm going to go to hell. Right. I'm going to hell. He was near death. He almost right. died. He, he saw all this shit, and he's like, I'm going to hell. I need to save my soul. Yes. Right. You know, it's one of those age-old classic stories right. of, of redemption, but very well done. It was like, if they made this into a movie or a TV, show, or a TV series, you got a hit. Right. Oh, it, but it, see, this is, and, and a, the, a lot of image stuff is or has been uh, made into shows and TVs, or oh, there's so much, so many image stories that are like... In development. In development. But... It, it's funny. It's like, and this right here, what we're talking about, is such the evolution of it of image too. In this, in this like kind of second uh, uh, resurgence, is how we kind of joked before about there was a lot of gimmicks in that early image, like the shadow hawk breaking the backs. It's like it doesn't go anywhere because they, I, they ironically were trying to copy what they where they just came from, right? But then you have stuff like I was just remembering uh, when you were talking about Chu. There's mm -hmm. a book and image called Sex Criminals. Yes. Now, uh, Sex Criminals, if you don't know, it's got a character named Susie. She's a librarian. And John, an actor, they met at a party, and after sleeping together, they discovered that they share the ability to freeze time when they come together. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, so, so as their relationship, as they develop and their sexual histories are explored, they decide to rob the bank where John works in order to save Susie's endangered library. And obviously the stories go on and on from there. But right. that is another one that is just you like... Imagine... imagine bringing that to Dan DiDio at DC Comics. <laughs> what do you think he would say? Or just be like, uh, well, maybe we could put it on our Vertigo line. Um, maybe. Uh, 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 why don't you put that on hold and come back with a superhero concept? Let's put a yeah. pin in that. Yeah, let's, yeah. Or go to Marvel and to... Um, what's his name? Casada. Yeah, Joe Casada. Do you, what do you think? He'd probably be like, you're smoking something. He'd be like, no, no, he wouldn't. He'd be like, no, there's no smoking in our comic books now. <laughs> you can't do that. That's right. So it's just, it's like individual individuals with fucking something to say and these great writers and great artists coming together mm. and putting out stories. And obviously, like, along with the art, the writing has just been so strong in comics that, and specifically in image lately. In image, just, yes. You know, yes. And, and actually, a lot of image writers, um, they, they, they get their... They chew the, the the their cud on uh, on image books, right? Like creating their own stuff, and then like Marvel or DC will see that, and they'll be like, "Oh my god, right? Like this is really good. We need him over here." And Nick then, Spencer. yeah, Nick it's Gilmer. it's yeah, that's Nick Spencer, who um, by the way uh, wrote a great image series, and I believe still writing this great yes. image series called Morning Glories. Right. Yes. Um, that is uh that's a little, about a little lost in there. Right. It was uh, art by Joe. Isma, I Isma. I want to say Isma. I'm Isma? sorry, Joe, if I'm <laughs> if I'm butchering your name. But yours um, great. Morning Glories is about six brilliant but troubled new recruits at Morning Glory Academy. It's a prestigious prep school hiding sinister and deadly secrets. <laughs> they described it as runaways meets lost, and it's uh, packed with mystery, supernatural intrigue, and murder. It's re it was really good, really right. solid right out of the gate. And it was something that people were talking movie rights and television right away. Um, but 
Like you have others like Saga, for instance, uh, which That's is a really big one right now. Yeah, it's yeah. written by Brian K. Vaughn and illustrated by Fiona Staples. Excellent. It depicts a uh, it depicts a husband and wife uh, team up of uh, their their names is Alana and Marco. They're from long warring extraterrestrial races. They're fleeing authorities from both sides of a galactic war as they struggle to care for their daughter Hazel, who was born in the beginning of the series and narrates the series as an unseen adult. So she hmm. talks about her childhood and then we read the stories. Okay. This is another one that was probably like the Wonder for, Years in a way. Right, yeah. A very fucked up Wonder Years. <laughs> <laughs> and then like another one that I, I can't like guys, I got I can't stress this one enough. This one is was my bread and butter, man. This one was a was something I followed clear to the end and it just ended here recently. Hmm. Um it's nail biter. This was written by Joshua Williamson and art by Mike Henderson. It centers around a fictional town of Buckaroo, Oregon, which has produced 16 of the United States' worst serial killers. Which isn't too far off. I mean, in real life, you've got, what, like the Green River Killer? And some yeah, Seattle, people over the Ted right. Bundy. Yeah. Like, like yeah, up north there, they like to kill. Yeah. Uh, it's most Be- recent... Beautiful cre- trees and murder. Yes, <laughs> in, in uh, waterfalls. Yes. Yeah. Its most recent creation is Edward... Charles Warren, otherwise known as the nail biter, due to his predilection for chewing off his victims' nails and part of their flesh. Holy mm. shit. Mm. Yeah. And by the series starts, um, Warren has been caught by the FBI, and he's been caught by an agent named uh, Charles Carroll. However, Carroll has since gone missing, leaving it up to his friend and NSA agent Nicholas Finch to search for him. Nicholas decides to start his search in Buckaroo which is where he last heard from his friend, and he begins to question why the small town has produced so many murderers. So it's 30 issues of solid why and how and who, and that's fucked up. Like 30 solid issues of this. And if there was ever a series prime for some type of movie or television, it is, it is definitely Nailbiter. Now, Buckaroo is the name of the town? Yes. Now, in Buckaroo, do they, do they grow any bonsai? No. <laughs> No. <laughs> uh, uh, all yeah. right i'm done yeah yeah you definitely <laughs> that done. sounds good though nail biter i thought just the, the the chewing off the nails and the flesh right there i was like all right i, I will read that because that is some sadistic it, shit it's creepy as shit yeah. yeah and there's another one that i also enjoyed it's like these little mini series from writer brandon seaford and artist lucas kettner it's called witch doctor Oh, yes. I remember this. This was great. It's based out of uh, Portland, Oregon, if I recall. I think that's where the British young men are from. <laughs> like a lot of Oregon <laughs> shit. Yes. And which, interesting enough, Image Comics is now in based Oregon. In, in Oregon. Yeah, you're going to get a lot of Oregon creators, creators and writers and stuff and artists. Hey, the more the merrier. The dream of the 90s. But Witch Doctor... Which Grunge. Is, <laughs> Witch Doctor, which is under um, Kirkman Skybound. I, th- I think it was, might have been his very first book out of Skybound, interesting enough, when he started his own little um, company. Perhaps. Perhaps. We don't know. We're not sure. But, but, but I know it's one of his first ones. We don't research everything, guys. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, look it up. But Witch Doctor is very good. It combines elements of horror and medical drama. Uh, the protagonist's name is Dr. Vincent Morrow, who is a maverick doctor who specializes in supernatural medicine, but supplementing, sorry, supplementing common medical practices with magic. Mm-hmm. So instead he uses magic to you know solve cases or heal people from their issues. So a lot of the cases deal with infectious supernatural creatures like vampires, demonic possession. In the first Doctor's miniseries, Dr. Merle treats a vampire, uh, demons possessing a child, fairy changelings, um, has like a Black Lagoon type character. Yeah, it was really different and really uh, intriguing. It It had a really good spin to it that there's this doctor that just treats these paranormal instances like you would any other type of disease right, or so you have like a affliction. virus but it's kind of like a demonic virus instead right yeah it was it was a great idea and it's something again that is primed and ready for a movie for or a tv, a TV series. series i could definitely see this going the the way of the tv series yeah if you put like on showtime or something like that it'd be awesome yeah like yeah. kirkman can't hog at all there's got to be other guys out there <laughs> that need to be getting on some tv Absolutely. and fx right. uh amc stars Stars has been like really bringing it lately. Like I think they just picked up American Gods. Stars is bringing FX is goddamn on fire. I mean, like with, yeah, Legion, with Legion and 
and even their other stuff that feud the betty uh betty davis and yeah. Jimmy crawford thing is amazing uh uh taboo was really good american horror story yeah uh another book though that actually just popped in my head because i was like oh is that vertigo uh southern bastards oh uh, yeah by jason aaron. jason aaron oh my god who that wrote book. the shit out of ghost rider wrote the shit out of ghost rider and uh i think it was on vertigo scalped scalped yeah. scalped is great scalped mm-hmm. is great so that's why i wasn't sure if southern bastards was vertigo but that actually is an image uh yeah you have what is it earl tubb is an angry old man with a very big stick pretty much it's just this i read the, i think i read the first two graphic novels kind of like walking dead and one my friend said you should read this because i was like oh well you got to read scalped if you're reading jason aaron and he said we'll read southern bastards and i read the first two trades at his apartment that day like wow. they were that good it's just it's it's hardcore it's good it's like this old southern town like it's kind of got a preacher feel but if you know jason aaron's writing it's it's jason aaron through and through and he's a great writer so yeah southern bastards was another one. It, it, it's just funny as we're talking about this you realize image is like the top of their game like as far as like original ideas for comics and uh uh the, in almost in the non-superhero vein image is is the number one for me what's yeah. great is they have every genre you could ever want so there's something for everybody if you want superheroes they got that if you right. want uh medical drama type thing they got that you want sci-fi you want comedy whatever you want it's there yeah, yeah. if you want somebody eating human flesh to try to decipher how they got murdered it's, it's there. there if you want to be able to stop time while having an orgasm it's there it's yeah. there. Yeah. And that's that one was requested the most. And in my humble opinion, image may in some respect is might be keeping the industry alive with that originality because what it is, it forces DC and Marvel to up their game. Yeah. To up their game. And also it's just like I mean, as a longtime comic reader, sometimes you just need a break from the superhero stuff. And yes. you want, you know, you wanna you wanna have that real just you know, Vertigo, def- DC definitely was on top of it with Vertigo, and I'm sure we can do a whole pod on Vertigo. But they were definitely uh, at the forefront of those adult-themed, uh, original, non-superhero stories. But Image takes that to another level because they have these ongoing series that just keep coming and keep coming. Yep, yep. every practically every month or something new. Yeah. There's another um, title from Nick Spencer that I liked. It was a five-issue miniseries. It took him a while to finish, but I, I waited patiently. And Infinite I enjoyed something? It. Infinite Vacation. Ah, yes. That is a fun one. That did take a while. Jesus Christ, that took a while. <laughs> well, it's like Morning Glories. He's not always on time with that either, but hey, it's all good. Because, you know, he, he's no, str- not but hey. He stretched out thin. You know, <laughs> not but hey. Get he's, it he's done. Writing, he's writing from Get it people. done, Nicky. Get it done. <laughs> Yeah, he's a nice guy. Nikki Spencer needs to get it done. He's a nice guy. He's a cool guy. <laughs> That's fine. You can be cool, but Just you get can get it, it done. done. Just get it done. Get it done. Well, hey, it's not as bad as Image United. That never got finished. That never got finished. It probably, it probably won't be finished. We'll probably be There's in the There's actually grave. a couple Image. Uh, image something out. There was another Image. Like, Image some Darker Image, right? Yeah. Darker Image only went one or two issues, and it never got finished. Darker Image. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah they tried to introduce it. We'll be so in the nursing home by the time Earlier finishes. in their career, Darker Image never got finished, and then, like, Image United later on. Which, by the way, I was at the the comic convention when they then when they were announcing it, and they had the first issue out and stuff. And I believe you know we we shared in this bounty. I got everybody from Image to sign that number one book. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. That's this is ten years ago. Yeah, it's a beautiful book, and um, you know everybody was there. Everybody was there, and I can tell you who the who the people were that were like really cool and receptive and. Who the people were that were a little bit rude and who was just like, <laughs> looked like they were just arrogant as fuck. And they were all there. All of them were there. But you'll have to find me in person to ask me that. <laughs> Another one that's near and dear to my heart, and everybody and anybody that's listened to this podcast in the past would know, is Airboy. Now, um, James Robinson, who, um, you know, wrote some, some JSA stuff and uh starman epic run the epic run on starman and you know some pretty seminal stuff he decided to write himself into a comic book with airboy because at this point davy nelson is basically now in the uh the public domain right so he wrote a series where him and an artist friend um do a lot of i believe it's a lot of coke (laughs) and then uh go on an adventure with airboy davy nelson himself really yeah yeah, this this actually happened. It was like four was it issues terrible long. Or good or fun. It was a combination of 
of like self deprecating and like a huge pat on the back and then i think it was it felt kind of like somebody was having a midlife crisis right and writing it out right which is not necessarily a bad thing but it was just interesting that he chose airboy to be that source right so it was it was it was a fascinating read um it's like i said it's only like four issues i believe four or five so um if you do find it, it it's worth picking up and checking out especially if you're like me and you're a big airboy fan right um but it's just weird it's just weird just know there's going to be uh some dicks you're going to see some dicks <laughs> some airboy cut there's going to be some swinging penises um but you know at least that series got finished on like something like non-player which we've only seen two issues in the last what two years oh god it's like more than that I three think. years yeah it's ridiculous three or four years yeah like this the guy that that created it nate nate simpsons i think it was his name yes he created this this world and this story and it was amazing right and then he he just kind of disappeared and then like a couple years later came out with the second issue and then just disappeared again you and always it, wonder what, yeah, what's going, it's got to be like personal shit or something, like when guys like, we were talking about back in, in, in uh, the first image, we were, uh, we kind of did some detective work, but why Willis Portacio disappeared for a while, and it's because we found out something was wrong with his, his sister was really sick, so he was yeah. taking care of her, so you got to wonder sometimes with creators when they start out with something that obviously is near and dear to their heart, and then they just disappear. Yeah, life, mm-hmm. life happens, so, you know, that's what it is, brothers. Yeah, absolutely. And you know you gotta you gotta look at some of the huge talent images brought in over the years. I mean, you know, I I know we mentioned um, Alan Moore as as one of them that was earlier yeah. on, which is surprising. But uh, Warren Ellis, mm-hmm. um, you know, Brian K. Vaughn, Ed Brubaker, Ed Ed Brubaker is another one. Ed Brubaker um, has done a lot of noir crime type stuff. Fatal. Fatal, which is like um, more like um, Cthulhu. Yes, yes. Yeah. I was like, Chip. oh, oh, H.P. Lovecraft. Yes, uh, he's done. A, uh, he did uh, with Fatal, I believe it was some H.P. Lovecraftian type shit that that came up and came about with that, which is pretty cool. It's funny you brought up Warren Ellis because I love his writing, first off, but also we didn't bring up in the first part another uh, kind of in the middle area, Stormwatch. Oh yes, yeah. Super Stormwatch. There was a Stormwatch story that Warren Ellis did. It was like when Stormwatch was kind of, they were ending Stormwatch, that particular series, to kind of revamp it. Mm-hmm. And they had this, they had this character. I love Superman uh, analogs. Like, I love, I've, I've said this many times. I love, right. I, I just love a character that's based off of Superman because then they can kind of do whatever they wanted. You know, we talked about Supreme in the last, in the last pod. They created this character called The High. And he was this dude who was like in the 40s, was like a Superman. And he comes back with this team uh, to pretty much say, look, Stormwatch, you guys are this government team. You're doing all your things. That's great, but you work for the government. I have this team of people who we can change the world. Mm-hmm. And we've seen the story before, but it, they did it really. It was a three-issue uh, run, and or a three-issue arc. And they do it. Like, they have this one guy named the Gen Engineer, or Engineer, or whatever, and he can make... Uh, I prefer to call him the Gen Engineer. Gen, gen Engineer. Yeah. Uh, he can he, he uses uh, nanotechnology, and he creates, like, food for everybody. Nice. Then, like, the High is, like, the Superman, so he can, like, save the world. And Stormwatch is, like, well, they are, you know, they're doing what they're saying, but the head of Stormwatch is, like, we can't just let someone come in. Which is probably what would happen in real life. We can't just let somebody come in our country and and make it right you know yeah (laughs) you know you can't just have someone come in and solve it because they're not sanctioned Mm -hmm. or they're not like that and they pretty much attack them and then they have this all-out war and he's just crazy and he's just like why won't you let me help you and i remember getting mad though because there was another cool character that they just kind of the high that they just killed off and then i think they tried to bring him back in some convoluted story later on yeah but it didn't quite work no but warren ellis was just the shit with that he also wrote um the authority if I'm correct, authority, for, yes. for Wildstorm, right? Wasn't it Wildstorm? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, like, and that was big. Don't get me wrong, but it didn't get huge until no. Millar took over. That's right, Mark That's Millar right. or Mark Miller, however he likes to pronounce it. It right. changes, I think, based on the amount of alcohol ingested. Like the gen engineering, right? 
Um, so Mark Millar um, took over for that and made it like ultra fucking violent and mm -hmm. crazy. And people started to take notice. Right. And it gave us characters that we learned to love. Yeah, well, Apollo and yeah. what was his his lover? <laughs> his yeah. lover's name? What was uh, his name? Midnighter, right? Yeah, the Midnighter. Midnighter. They were a gay, yeah. a gay superhero couple. Mm -hmm. And that was like just mentioned offhand like oh yeah by the way they're a couple and i was like oh oh okay yeah yeah you didn't even care no they were so badass right it's like whatever you know i don't i don't i don't care who they're having sex with i care who they're punching in the face right and it was great it was a great series and actually millar for a, a little bit um Helped kind of Marvel was like, oh no, you know, oh no, <laughs> no. we need like an, an, an creator own thing. So they came up with Icon, which was basically to kind of appease Millar and uh, Brian Michael Bendis, who wanted to do some of their own stuff. Brian right. was doing Powers through right. Image Comics at the time, which for, I don't know if it's still going on, but for two seasons, it was a series on on the playstation network right not bad I, i've watched i've heard mixed things i watched half of the first season and i'm digging it so far right i'm digging it i'm not loving it but i'm digging it um and so they were like well we need to keep these guys interested so they came up with this icon imprint but millar after a while was still like you know i'm gonna go back to you know where my bread is buttered and he went back you know and he publishes a lot still now mm -hmm. through image under millar world Right. And he puts out some really good, solid books. Um, you know, I, of course, under Icon, it was um, uh, Kick-Ass, which was created there. Right. But he started to sell this idea of, I'll have a five or six issue mini series, which tells a complete story, and then I'll package that and market it to, like, movie studios and production companies. Right. And try to sell that idea. And... The Kingsman? Yeah, the Kingsman was another one. Right. So, like, he's become the the standard for that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And that's o basically only what he writes now. Right. Is what he chooses to, and it's only in five or six issues. And then he's it's like a one-and-done type full contained, full contained story. Right. And if he wants to go back to it, he'll make, like, the sequel or whatever, which could be used for the sequel to the movie. Didn't he also right. do, like, a, his own Superman type thing? Was it Superior or something like that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he did. You're right. It was where this kid got these powers from this evil monkey. <laughs> yeah, no joke. And um, basically, the monkey by was kind of like that the devil. Was very creepy. By yes, the way. he did. Holy it was, crap! Like was the creepy. monkey in the closet from uh, Family Guy is nothing compared <laughs> oh, to this yeah. monkey. Oh yeah, no, no, no. And this monkey had like a space suit on, if I yeah. recall. Yeah, like it's so weird. Yeah, it's, it's so bizarre. Right. Like it, it kind of creeped the heck out of me. Like what the heck? If is Detective this? Chimp wanted to eat your children, <laughs> that's what this would look like. Yep. And it was from outer space. I was just thinking too. Uh, uh, I mean, it's been under several publishers, but Mike Allard's Madman was under a lot of Image Comics. Yeah, or I mean, under the Image. Uh, under Image, I think it did. I don't know if it did Dark Horse for a while, but it did like some it's other gone press all over the place. Yeah, um, the Elephant Man. Uh, well, that's still going on too, and surprisingly, it's like in a, a long run. I honestly, I know not much about it. I know mm -hmm. there's like a hippo dude or something in it. <laughs> I thought, or maybe yeah. I'm no, wrong. No, it's about this guy. He's deformed. It's in uh, the in England in um, in the that's... 19th century. No, that's not right. No, no. Nope. Uh, and he's like, I'm not an animal. No, okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Wait, there's got to be a cool sound effect for that one. <laughs> where, there is. Where, where, there is. It's there. It's there. Where is that one? Here. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, there's also Astro City. We talked about Kurt. Uh, Busiek. And, yes, uh, Astro City was very popular, and that had a whole bunch of. Uh, I think it had a it had a run, and then it had a whole bunch of like shorter contained stories, kind of what mm -hmm. we're talking about. Oh, and let's not forget um, Rising Stars. Rising Stars, yeah. Which mm -hmm. um, the guy that did uh, did Babylon Five, J. Michael Straczynski. Straczynski yeah. yeah, 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 and he also did that Sense Eight, which is uh, relatively current on Netflix. He did a lot. He did some, yeah, he did a lot of movie writing. Too. I think he did that Changeling movie, too. That one with, uh... uh Angelina Jolie? Yeah. I'm really? I'm positive he did that. I'll yeah. be damned. Yeah. If he didn't, oh well. <laughs> if he did, then I don't know. But if he did, we're cool. Because we got it. Yeah. But yeah, Rising Stars, um, I think... 
I, I'm, I could be incorrect, but it's been banted about many times as far as like being a series or a movie or something um, in the works. Right. So Rising Star is about being a... It's been being banted about as far as being a, a series or a movie or something in the works, I think. Right. So that's another one. That ran for a good long... I think like it was like 20-some issues that that ran for. It was like a maxi-series type thing. Maxi-series? Huh? Yeah. Instead of a mini-series, a maxi-series. Kind of a mini pad or a maxi pad. <laughs> Just absorbs more with the maxi series. Oh, they're they're good liners too for your panties. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, you could always tell when it's getting late with this. Yep. Also, we cannot forget about the famous Kirkman manifesto out to all creators, especially writers, about basically saying to go and start out if you can, get into DC, get into Marvel, do your thing, but when you reach full popularity leave and do your own thing create your own material wow you know and and, and then truly profit from it and tom mcfarland agreed with that completely he said this is what i'm talking about this is what i want people to do you know create your own product work hard struggle with it unless it's in my comic then <laughs> i would take you to court yes and we'll apparently. talk about that but i think that's kind of like you know a beautiful thing to live by it's hard it's not easy but i think that's a true entrepreneurial independent spirit right for me it was just it was riding the wave of that excitement of this is this group of artists and creators who i i we i mean just imagine it's just it's all your fa at this one time in history if you're reading comics all your favorite artists and creators in a sense because a lot of these guys created th these characters like deadpool and 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 cable and such all of a sudden said hey we're gonna start our own company and we're gonna create a whole bunch of cool characters that you're gonna love and we're gonna reinvigorate the comic market we're gonna I mean, and not even that we were looking at it as a market but like i just remember going into a comic store i remember a new comic store up and i grew up in in uh, northern california in, in marin county there wasn't that many comic shops especially in my town and one new one opened up right around this time. And I remember going in there and seeing people I had never seen before in my life. There was a swarm. So, I mean, obviously, yes, a lot of fair weather comic collectors. Right. But at the same time, we created that excitement. That excitement of running to the, the shelf and grabbing that number one and just saying, okay, I got it. I can't wait to go home and read it. And it, it was the mix of being a collector and a fan and, and, and just a lover of comics. So that's what that's for me what it is, and then to this day, just the originality and the 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 storytelling. And to to me, it's always meant throwing things against the wall to see what stuck. Mm -hmm. Like even back then, they were just you know they were just throwing things out there. Let's try this. Let's try that. Let's see if that works. Let's see if this works. If it doesn't, let's try something else. And that model has been honed almost to perfection at this point. Mm -hmm. To where some of the most, I mean, we just talked about a guy that eats people to be able to like tell how they died mm -hmm. and like a school that's filled with mystery and murder and mm -hmm. stuff. And, and then a, a guy that bites the fingernails off people and, <laughs> and just the weirdest shit yeah. that you could not ever see come out of DC or Marvel with staying power with staying power <laughs> yeah. is coming out of image still to this day. So I think the diversity is something that I take away from it. The excitement from when I was a kid is still there. Right. But I I must say, talking about this now with you gentlemen, I'm getting that that kind of a goosebumpy, pimply feeling I got when I was a kid when I picked up my first issue of of Spawn or Young Blood when I finally got that number one mm -hmm. and held it in my hands. I still feel excited to this day when I open up a new image book, thinking maybe. Absolutely. Maybe, yeah, maybe this will be my next big thing. Right. And, th and that's I think that's what image means to me. It means diversity, and it means excitement. And for me, image means to me, it opens up a world of possibilities. It also tells you to take a chance. It's okay if you fail. Mm -hmm. It tells yeah. you not to give up. You know, sometimes you got to fall flat in your face. But you know what? If you keep struggling, you keep digging, you keep trying, you keep putting your heart and soul into it, eventually the payoff will come. And for... Some of these guys, that's what happened. You know, they didn't become, at least the guys after the original seven, they didn't become, you know, successful overnight. It took mm -hmm. a while for Kirkman to find his ground. Mm -hmm. And some of these other guys, Warren Ellis, it took time. So it's kind of inspired me, inspired us for that matter, 
to take a chance. It's like we're doing with this program we've helped, we, we've uh, created, that dreams can come true. You just got to stick with it no matter what. Mm-hmm. And also believe in yourself. So I like to thank the original seven for the, what you've done. You're a great inspiration. Thanks for standing up for yourselves and your work and yes. saying, hey, we deserve some goddamn credit, you know? Yeah, like, right. We and make it exciting when I go into a store. Yeah, like you said, if I pick up a new image comic, I'm excited. Oh, I wonder if I'm going to like this, you know? And, you know, tell yourself, when you see that eye, that eye has quality. They're still they're still trying. They're still they're still being inventive and invigorative. They're mm-hmm. still being creative. And that's the most important part. I think DC and Marvel at times has forgotten that. Mm-hmm. And and I think even for a tiny period image, kind of just I don't think they forgot. They just didn't know where they were headed. Right. But once they got on that target, they haven't stopped. No, they do now. They do now. So with that, um, that's that'll do it. Please subscribe, uh, rate and review. Subscribe on iTunes, rate and review us. That's how people you know uh, get to get to know uh, about us. Uh, tell your friends. Um, Leave leave comments in the comment section and tell us your image memories. If you're yes, if please. you're as old as us, you know, if you're like in your thirties, forties, whatever the case may be, tell us about your image memories yeah. from the early nineties. Get, get on uh, YouTube, get on Rumblespoon.com, uh, wherever you're listening to this podcast. Let us know what you think. We're on Instagram. Um, yep, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Facebook. We got a nice uh, brand new spiffy Facebook page you can like and and follow on. We have Sunday Smackdowns now where That's you can right. talk about characters we. We give us ideas of characters you want us to talk about in battle, who would win, yeah. what you think, and uh, tell your friends about the greatest and most righteous podcast. Right, and and you know support your local comic shop. And with that, I am Donald. I'm Kevin. I'm Jared, and we'll see you at the comic shop.